Hello out there. It's good to see you. I'm glad you're, you've tuned in. And I trust that I'll have something to say tonight that will be a blessing to you. I'm going to share this with you, but I thought before I would speak tonight that I would just say the, the, the Lord's Prayer. And if you would care to join me, please. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass or our debts as we forgive those that are indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but, oh, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want to begin with a little song. I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to read you the words because what God has laid upon my heart to share with you tonight. I trust you'll get your Bible and you'll be ready and you'll be listening to the simplicity of what God has given me for tonight. Troublesome times are here, <laughs> filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear now is at stake. Humble your hearts to God. Save from the chastening rod. See the way pilgrims trod. Christians awake. Jesus is coming soon. Morning, night, or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpet will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one dies, heaven we're bound. I want to share with you tonight from the Word of God. I'm not as young as I used to be, but neither are you. So we can all say that. But I was born in 1931. That makes me 93 years old. God has promised a long life. I've been preaching the word for 51 years. I've pastored the church that I now pastor. I've pastored it for 46 years. So I've been around for a long time. So what I have to say tonight, I want you to listen very carefully. I'm reading from the scripture tonight. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Beautiful scripture. I remember years ago when when the men landed on the moon and they read the word of God before they got off of the spaceship. I want you to hear this tonight because my message tonight is what God said. I love modern technology. It's wonderful. But because of the increase in knowledge, I take this from it. He says, in the last days, knowledge 
would be increased. And we're here. We're here and knowledge has been increased. But I remember when these young men were on the moon, he read this scripture. And what I'm going to do is I want you to listen to what the Word of God says. Science tries to come up with different ideas. And if you watch your television at all, they're spending uh, rockets out with cameras on them. And the rockets can only go so far and they pass the, the planets. And they're trying to figure out what is out there. Well, very simply, I can tell you who's out there and what he has to say. But I remember it was Buzz Alden when he read these scriptures in the beginning. I love this. Hear what I'm saying. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I don't care what any scientist comes along, Darwin or someone else, and tries to make a different thing that it was different that the earth just happened. That is not true. Here's how it happened. And the earth was void and without form, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, moved upon the face of the water. And here it is. And God said, Oh, we have got to take this so seriously in the Word of God. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. It doesn't matter what Professor Jones or Professor Brown says. doesn't matter if they don't believe in God. I do, and I, I'm walking by faith. Scripture says in Hebrews that without faith it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So many times when you read, the, when they read the scripture that night on the moon, it said, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. You want to un try to understand this? This is the answer. And God saw that the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called it night. And evening and morning was the first day. Now if you have your scripture, you turn right now to the book of Genesis. That God gave to, to the prophet Moses when God wrote the word. And you follow along, and I'm just going to, I'm going to hit up on this, but I want my emphasis is on, and God said, oh, how important it is. How important it is to understand. He said, I can do all things. As he moved the scriptures, as he moved upon man's heart, I can do all things. Bear with me now. And God said, let the firmament in the mid be in the midst of the water and let it be divided. And it was so. And God said, let the water under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and the dry land appear. Hear what I'm saying tonight. When Buzz Alden, when they read this scripture before they got off of the, out of the capsule uh, that they landed on the moon, that signal was sent back to earth and we listened to it. But uh, as I was preparing for tonight's message, God said to me, that same message was sent out into space uh, and it's still going. Amen. Somebody say amen tonight. I'm used to amens when I'm preaching because you agree with me. Amen. Listen, it's still going out through space. Now, I'm going to read just a, a little more here. 
And this is, you want to know how we got grass? And God said, <laughs> come on. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seed and the fruit uh, tree yielding fruit after its kind. And it was so. And the evening and the morning was the third day. And God said, let there be a light in the midst of the firmament. That's the sun. Two lights. God created two lights. One to rule the day and one to rule the night. That's what God said. And God said, let the water bring forth abundantly the moving creatures. You know, <clears throat> see, Pastor Shedd, this is kind of a simple message. It is, because we need to go back and read the Word of God and get it in our hearts and bring it out through our mouth. You hide the Word of God in your heart with what you say. You can think about it, but that doesn't put it in your heart. I've learned over, the, over my uh, uh, 93 years uh, that what you say is what you get. Be careful, little tongue, what you say. Come on. You've got to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In Between. What you say, because the enemy is powerless around you. But he's listening to what you say. You get up in the morning and you say, I don't feel good. You have given him, a, you have given him authority over you. When you learn this in your Christian experience, that the enemy has no power over you in what you give to him. Now, I just threw that in for a little extra, okay? Because that's my, my style of preaching. If something comes into my mind and I, I need to say it, many times I, I, when I, I watch a sermon that I preached, I say, to, did I say that? I said that because God wants us to understand that. Now, listen very carefully. God created the whales. This is, the, this is the great creation of God. And God said, let everything bring forth. And now I'm down to the end of this and I'm going to, so I'm going to share what God says. The creation has been created by God. He spoke everything into existence. Can you... I'd love to have been there. Well, you were created in the beginning as spirit and soul. Amen. And here it is. And God said, let us make man in our image. That should wake you up that you have been created in the image of God. Listen. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and God created man in his image. In the likeness of God created he them, male and female. And God blessed them. I, I can just see when, uh, when this was being read on the moon. I can, I can just see going around the world, but going out through space. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, 
and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that moveth up on the earth. God said, I've given you the herbs. Now, here's a thought that I want to just drop into this sermon t tonight. When God created man and woman, he created man and woman. Amen. And we, now, we I'll share this with you in our message as we go a little farther. Man has tried to change that. Listen, there's, there's a parent's... Uh, that have been taken, their child has been taken away from them because they won't give them consent to, to operate on that little child to change its sex. You can't do that. That's so because that's not the way God made us. God made us men and women. And that's the way we, that we, you, you're never going to change that. I don't care how many men can grow their hair and put makeup on, and put female clothes on, but you'll never have a baby. And women, can I, can I say this? I know this is blunt, but, but I, I've got to give it the way God gives it to me. Amen. Listen, women, you can be, you can grow a beard if you try, if you can, and you can cut your hair real short, and you can wear overalls, men's clothes, but you never will be a man. And that's exactly what we need to understand. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me finish this. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Now I'm going to come into a little, a little thought here. Thus, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the, are you ready for this? This is what God says and this is what God means. And on the seventh day, God ended his, his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested. Listen to what I'm saying. There was a time that I remember... I'm going to drop off here for just a second. Excuse me. When people started every day and look at it now, Business goes on on the Sabbath day. But thank God for those people that believe in the Sabbath. That, that, that go to church and go into the house of God and worship God on the Sabbath day. Amen. Now I've given you the creation. I've had the, Lord's, the prayer of the Lord. Now I want to read the scripture to you what God says. You say it with your mouth, you hear it with your ears, and your ears will hear it and put it down into your heart. Blessed, this is what God says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Where do you get your instructions to live. Come on. 
I was just, some of the uh, universities, uh, some of the things that are coming out of that is not according to God's word. Now listen, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight. And here we are, we're back to the word now. Listen to this. Let me read that again. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the word of God. And in his word does he meditate day and night. Oh, hallelujah. I have learned to meditate in God's word. When I'm feeling low, I begin to say the things that God says. Listen, but his delight is in the word of God. And in his word does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. Oh, hallelujah. Planted by the water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doth will prosper. But the ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so. They're like the chaffs which the wind drives away. Therefore, because of what God has said, you walk in my way, you follow my way, you do, you do things my way, then you will be like a tree that's planted by the water. Can you just imagine that tree standing by the lake with the roots in the lake, getting all the water and nourishment that's exactly what the message that he wanted to get across to us to understand. In the word of God. That's why I'm reading, I'm reading the scriptures tonight in this way. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's the word of God. Now let me share this with you. I'm going to be talking about the good news. The message that needs to be shared around the world. Paul said in Romans, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. We're back to faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You must have faith. How do you get faith? By reading the Word of God and speaking it out, just like I'm doing tonight. Listen, here's what God says. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just, shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Hear what I'm saying. You may change what God says and put your own idea in there, but if God doesn't approve of it, you're going to give an account for it. Can I have an amen on that? Come on, you watching by television... I'm giving you, I'm giving you the, the facts from God's Word. Listen, I'm going to read that again. That's why I said I've got a lot of message tonight, and I'm going to finish up with, with, with uh, what God has laid on my heart. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that when they, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, but became vain in their own imagination. Listen, for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead. Listen, if you want to know if there is God, just look around. Look at the sky. Look at the trees. Look at the creation that God has created. It didn't just happen uh, circumstantially. It just didn't happen. God created it all. Amen. And now he gives us a message. If, you've, if you're away from him, you can come home. And this is the most beautiful part that I want to share with you tonight. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And here is the key for God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, this is the simplest part of the message tonight. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is a simple as it can be made. He is the answer. When he came into this world, when he took upon himself the form of man, I love that scripture that says that the word, word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us and, and went to the cross of Calvary and died on the cross and, and rose again in three days and whosoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And the reason is, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He is the answer. You look at the world today, and I'm going to be sharing that with you in just a moment. You look at the world today, and in my lifetime, I've seen it change. I have seen the world change. It's not the same world. What we call sin, what we call evil, today the world calls good. And for Christians, hear what I'm going to say, for Christians, we're living in the end of the age. Knowledge is increased. Things are happening. I, I remember when I was 10 years old I, in Arcoma, West Virginia, I, I went to the altar and I heard the preacher preaching that the trump of God is going to sound and the dead in Christ is going to rise first and we which are alive are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I was 10 years old. I remember that night as a little 10-year-old boy when I thought about the coming of the Lord, how He was coming, and that I needed to give my heart to the Lord. I went, I went down to what we called in those days the altar. It was called the mourner's bench. You don't see that in churches now. They simply don't have the mourner's bench. But it used to be you were called to the altar 
and you got on your knees and you called out to God and the saints of God would gather around you and lay their hands on you and pray for you and you could pray through to the victory. Amen. Come on. I hear somebody saying amen. Amen. It's true. That was in the days. Uh, things have changed uh, in the world, but I'm saying <clears throat> I'm 93 years old and I'm preaching it to you tonight like it was preached uh, back in the, uh, the, in the, in the 30s uh, and in the 40s and in the 50s and the 60s and then we got into the 70s and things began to change uh, and the world uh, walked away. But thank God that the gospel is still the same as it was then. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. For God so loved the world. He loves you. And he that believeth... Oh, let me read this again. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into this world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light. You want to know? As a child of God, a born again believer filled with the Spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That was the, that's D.L. Moody, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, Oral Roberts, uh, that's uh, the ministers of old uh, that stood in their pulpits and preached uh, and the anointing would come on them and they would speak to you in a language uh, that you didn't understand, but God understood it. Hallelujah. 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 And I say we need to get back to the days when we pray and we pray in the Spirit. Right. Oh, hallelujah. That, that you begin to cr cry out to Him. And, and, and when the Spirit of God comes on you, you begin, to, you begin to communicate directly with Him. Amen. Amen. It's not a, a man, your m mind may not understand, but you have a line. Thank God for it. You have a direct a line into the presence of God and it is through the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Glory. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you straight tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see. Where was I? I got off on that old time religion thing here because I'm an old time religion guy here. Amen. And I'm sharing it with you tonight. This modern day uh, uh, nonsense uh, uh, is denying the, the presence of God. He said this is what he said. <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I say what God has laid upon my heart? Amen. Everybody that, that gives me this permission, I want to see your hand. I see hands all over. All right. Because what I'm going to read now to you from the Word of God, it speaks of today and this hour in which we live. You see the wars, the rumors of wars, and if we think what's happening, that it's going to get worse, Christians are going to come under persecution. Because this is what I'm going to share with you. <laughs> Father, I thank you tonight for this wonderful privilege that you've given to me tonight to share 
the truth. And those out there watching by television, may their eyes be opened that we are living in the end of the age, that your coming is very soon. As I heard it when I was 10 years old, that's 86 years ago, but it's truer tonight than it's ever been. He's coming. You want to know what the world is like? Thus saith, I love this, how God put this in the word 2,000 years ago when Paul was writing to Timothy. They were expecting, by the way, they were expecting the Lord to come back in their time. The 2,000 years has gone by. But a 1,000 years with God is as one day, and one day is a 1,000 years. But listen to what I'm going to say. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves and listen to this list, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Can you see that in the world today? Open your eyes and you can see it. We have, a, we have even in our government, there is so much corruption. Uh, this is going on. Listen, without, and hear this, without natural affection, truth breakers, fierce accusers. Come on. Listen to what I'm saying. Incon inconsistent. Fierce despisers of those that are good. You name the name of Jesus. You have repented of your sins and ask him to come into your life. Not only is it happening in our nation, but it's happening around the world. Christians are being persecuted. But I want you to hear this tonight. Back in, I guess it was 1986, I went to Charlotte, North Carolina, and Mary Brown has gone to be with the Lord now. She gave a prophecy over me, and I took it, and I've sat on it for how many, over 30-some years now. But the other morning I woke up and God said, Son, Today is the day of that prophecy. Remember when Jesus went into the temple and he went into the synagogue and he said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Here's what he said. She said, I will shake that place by my marvelous grace and what is left will want to see my face. Listen. Listen. There's a division taking place. If you're not serious with him, you will walk away. Here's what the prophecy said. For the road that's ahead of you, O son, is not going to be easy, but the road is mine. I will shake that place by my marvelous grace, and what is left will want to see my face. It's better to have a people you see that will follow wholeheartedly after me. Understand what I'm saying? Than a crowd or a multitude that really don't want to know that Jesus can restore, that he can change your life, uh, that he can control your life, that, that you can be right with God. So she said, so reach up and touch me and you will see that I'm imparting liberty. And that's what I've used tonight, the liberty, to share what God laid up on my heart. You say, well, I don't understand all of it. Listen, get your Bible, get into the Scriptures, begin to speak forth the Word of God. How precious it is. Listen, 
Now, here's the part. Here's the part that I see in, in, in our nation. Traitors. Haughty. High-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the message that God has laid upon my heart for tonight. It is time for God's people, for those that are seeking His face 100%. He said, I will shake that place. And listen, What's happening in our nation right now? The weather that's taking place. There's something going on. There's something happening. And I really believe it's the coming of the Lord. And coming and coming very soon. But for God's people. For those that are born again. Hallelujah. For God's triumphant ones. Hallelujah. Listen. Finally, I'll close my message tonight. You've got to think about this for a moment. Finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on <laughs> the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against wicked spirits in high places. Wherefore unto you take the whole armor of God on. Amen. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. When Paul was in that jail, when he was locked up and the soldiers came in, he saw them with their armor on and he used it to, as an illustration that, that we need to pick up on. And let me read this again. Because I want to share this with you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not fighting people. We're fighting the spirits that is behind, that's making them do the things that they do and go the way they are going. It's frightening. That is frightening. That that's what we're wrestling against. And it takes the 100% power of God in your life to withstand in this evil day. The rulers of the darkness of this world. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. The truth. What is truth? It's the Word of God. It's God's Word. Having, meditating on it. Listen. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of His righteousness. Not yours, but His. Oh, hallelujah. I love that part. And your feet shod with the gospel of peace. And above all, the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all of the fiery <coughs> darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in a language that, that they used on the day of Pentecost. Listen. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And then he said, pray for me. Pray for me. And we can pray one for another. And that's why that God has led us in this direction. And God is leading us. And I tell you, we, we haven't seen anything yet. But God's going to, he's be, going to begin to wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you say, well, that just happened. No, no, no. God wants to communicate with us on a personal way at 3 o'clock in the morning when everything is quiet and you feel that. Remember how God spoke to Samuel in the middle of the night? It probably was about 3 o'clock in the morning. And when God called him, but listen, what God is doing, there is, and I'm going to share this with you, there is a separation taking place. There are those that have a hunger for the things of God that are speaking the things of God. Be careful what you say. And I close with this tonight for our nation. I pray tonight for the president. I pray tonight for the Congress and for the Senate, for the Supreme Court. I pray for every state, the governor. Come on, that God would move in a mighty way into their lives and into their hearts so that the gospel will go out because soon and very soon, and hear what I'm saying, soon and very soon, the trump of God is going to sound and we're going to be out of here. Amen. And I close tonight with prayer. Father, I thank you for this wonderful privilege that you've given me to share the truth of your word. All the way from Genesis, Lord, the creation of the world. And what you've had to say, and what, what, what you've laid upon my heart. And I'm praying tonight for the president, for the vice president as such, and for the governors, for the senators. I'm praying for our nation tonight, God, that you would move in a mighty way. You would move in a, a, a way that we would understand and bring your people together in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And everybody said, Amen. I didn't hear that. Amen. I didn't hear that. I heard that. Amen. Let me, let me close with this. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the ocean white with foam. God bless my nation. Touch hearts in a special way. Oh, turn this nation around, God. Raise up those that will stand in the, upon your word. And we'll even pray this prayer. God, bless our nation, but you can't bless sin. You can't bless men's wickedness. But God, there's a, there is a, 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 a people that are called that are living according to your word. So I'm going to read that one more time and and then I will close. God, 
bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night that we're facing with the light from above and do it from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam. God bless America. My home, sweet home. I wish I had my shofar with me tonight. I would blow it at this time. Amen. If I would have known how it was going to close, I would have told Tim to get that shofar and sound it tonight. God bless you. I trust you. You were blessed with my message tonight. Amen and amen and amen.